It's the 23rd of December 2022. John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. It's a very bleak day. It's pouring with rain. And um, I'm sitting in my car outside a, a cafe in the local district waiting to see if a uh, sister in Christ is coming with some we've got some presents to give them for the grandchildren the granddaughter and the great-granddaughter and so I'm sort of what I call kicking my heels sitting here thinking praying looking at life and when you've received the Holy Spirit as your indwelling teacher he is on the inside of your spirit and your soul and obviously your body giving you an, an understanding of life as you see it. Passers-by, shops, trees, everything is available for God to teach us something about life. And of course Jesus taught with parables and he picked everyday things of life to teach his disciples. Well, the Holy Spirit is the discipler. He's the one teaching us. He's another counsellor, a teacher, and he's teaching us. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is always pointing to Jesus Christ. He's always pointing the way to Christ as being the way. So the Holy Spirit is po pointing the way to Christ as the way to God the Father in heaven and that is the truth because the scripture shows us that the Holy Spirit himself is our teacher so this is a new day new wine for new wineskins and even as I say that I am aware that the status quo Christianity churches remain exactly as they are yesterday last week last year 10 years ago am i being unfair probably because i've not been to every christian church in the whole world obviously and you will know the christian church you go to whether that church group community, society, whether they are born of God. You will know that yourself because of the Holy Spirit. He is within you to bear witness of those who know Christ. So we're talking about the church as being the fellowship of the believers in the Holy Spirit who are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, in Christ friends in Christ so today I'm sitting here in the car waiting on a phone call pouring with rain and I reached out to make a phone call to one of my friends in the city a brother in Christ and we had a conversation on the phone about the things of God. I talked to him about somebody who mentioned to me the other day that they personally do not believe that street preachers are doing what God wants them to do at this time of the church development. Now, I didn't argue with him there's no point in arguing with him because he came from a position of his mind was made up that street preaching was no longer the thing to do. That one-to-one, -one, not quite friendship evangelism, but one-to-one, -one, uh, and he didn't use the word preaching, but one-to-one -one relationship with people to lead them to Christ is what he thinks the church should be doing. And of course, he's not wrong. 
as a brother in Christ, we can discuss the things of God. We both have the Holy Spirit. But having said that, I knew his mind was made up that he has himself personally ruled out street preaching to the public for himself. It's not something he would do, it's not something he wants to do, and he would say he's not called to do it, and his suggestion was that nobody is called to do it these days because it's all become personal one-to-one. -one. Not friendship evangel evangelization, but something similar. But that's not friendship evangelizing because that phrase itself means there's a motive of being friendly with people so that we can just win them to Christ, but we're not really being friendly. It's almost like a manipulation. That's not what he is doing, but he, what he is doing is inside the church building, and he has presumably friends outside, contacts that he talks to one-to-one. -one. Fair enough. That's what I do. I talk to uh, saved people and lost people about Christ, one-to-one, one-to-two. So, the preaching of the gospel is our commission. And we are saved to tell people the fact that we are saved, and who saved us, and from what did he save us? Sin, obviously. And we know what Jesus said to his disciples applies to us. So, Jesus wants us to be salt and light. And it's his light. It's not our own light. The light that we have is the light of Christ. And so we are bringing light into people's lives. We must be, make absolutely sure that they don't think that we are the light. We must give the glory to God, declaring Jesus Christ to be the light. And of course, having said that, we know that many people are under the light of Lucifer, a false light, a false religious light a light that looks like the light of Christ, but it isn't. It's a counterfeit. And only when you have the Holy Spirit can you realize by the Holy Spirit gift of discernment, distinguishing spirits, who you're talking to. Somebody who has Christ in them, has the Holy Spirit, is saved, or somebody who's not saved, hasn't got Christ, hasn't got the Holy Spirit. And that's not judgment. That's not judgment that people put us down with. Oh, you're judging me that I'm not born again. Well, are you born again? And what were you saved from? If a person doesn't have a testimony, once I was, brackets, fill, the, fill in the blanks, once I was, now I am, Arguably, are they born of God? Arguably. Once I was, now I am. Once I was in darkness, now I am, I am in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know my testimony. Once I was in the darkness of Freemasonry, I was under the master of the lodge, a religious, legalistic, pharisaical, occultic religious group with a master of the lodge, a number one. A master. Not a pastor, but a master. And in that lodge meeting, there were vicars and bishops and people from all the walks of uh, power and authority of the city. The city fathers, if you like, represented there. Government, professions, police, and we didn't know who the brothers were, I say brothers in quotes, because it was a brotherhood of men networked together for mutual help and encouragement. And of course, that would include business. None of that was said, none of that was written down. There was an, an implied membership agreement that you help your brother in need when he comes to you. So that was obviously a, a false light. It was a charity, a group, a club, a society, 
a men's group within society, but occult, hidden and secret. What's that got to do with Christ? Absolutely nothing. It's the opposite. Everything about Christ is open. Truth in love. Truth in love. So going back to the point about preaching in the street, am I going to stand up today in this pouring rain and talk to shoppers who are um, interested only in buying stuff for Christmas and, and, and buying and selling? Am I going to stand up personally and, and, and shout my head off? No, I'm not. Without a microphone or with a microphone, I'm not going to do it. But I'm not saying there isn't a place for doing that. I'm not going to say that. Because there is a place for that to happen. And in these days, absolutely, the world doesn't want preachers preaching in the street, telling them the truth about sin, death, hell. They don't want to hear it. The world is too busy. It's, it's shut its mind to the fact there is a God who loves them, who wants to save them from sin. The world doesn't know that anymore. It's not taught that anymore. And the, the schools don't teach it. So how can the world hear the gospel if nobody tells them the world? And I'm talking about the world outside the religious buildings, in the marketplace, where the shops are, in the city centre, or the town centre, or the village centre, the village shop, the village pub, where the communities gather for the buying and selling of goods. Now, you might know where I'm going with this, because the world is inside many, if not most, of the churches. Whether they are highly religious organisations, uh, say a cathedral with, a, with a, um, a souvenir shop and a cafe, that is a marketplace right there inside the religious building a marketplace for buying and selling. Souvenirs, teas and coffees, refreshments, being sold to customers. And the customers might be members of the church who want to give money for the food and the refreshments and the souvenirs. But what I'm talking about is in the year 2022, the ethos of society is buying and selling and that ethos of society the normal ways of society that has crept into the churches a good 30 years ago when people started to sell audio tapes of quotes worship songs that that people stood on the sta on the stage and sang songs and recorded them to sell their tapes as a source of income. And then, of course, they had uh, spiritual songs that were new songs, supposedly to worship God with, but then they recorded it, copyright, and sold it as a, a product, a commodity for income. And, and the music industry uh, had a new genre called uh, CCM, Christian, contemporary Christian music, CCM, like gospel music, but this is CCM, contemporary Christian music, and that was a good 30 years ago. And there was one man, I don't need to mention him, he went to America and he got the, uh, the way of growing your church into a mega church, he took it back to Australia and he revamped his local church in Australia renamed it and it grew to be a global phenomenon with music uh, uh, its own music label and it, it's become rich and famous throughout this world but preaching the gospel was never about preaching to get money never 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 of course paul wrote about preaching the gospel that it, is, it was his right to live off the gospel, which means that people would reward him for telling him the truth. But that's not why Paul preached the gospel. It's not why Peter preached the gospel. 
It's not why Peter became a fisher of men, to fish the money out of their wallets in the men's pockets. That was not, not, not the purpose of Christ working in Peter and through Peter and Paul. They were not after the money. They weren't even after the souls of the lost. They were obeying God in the Holy Spirit, in Christ, to preach the truth in love, just as Jesus did. And of course, you know, I know, all the early disciples, they were killed because they were true preachers of the true gospel. Except John, of course, on Patmos. All the early disciples were killed. And there were probably many, well, there were many unnamed disciples of Christ, called Christians, who were thrown to the lions, torn apart, set alight. But they never denied Jesus Christ. So who am I preaching to, the converted or the convertible? Can I stand up in a church coffee bar, in a church souvenir, souvenir shop, and just say, does anybody know Jesus here? Of course I can't. It's against the law, disturbing the peace. I can't do that in worldly shops. I can't do that in church shops. And I call them church shops because they are buying and selling. But what about Sunday morning? Can I stand up in the middle of the service and say, excuse me, can we just stop this service and can we just talk about Jesus for five minutes, two minutes? Can somebody tell me who Jesus is? Well, of course, I know who Jesus is, my saviour, my master, my teacher. But can I stop a religious service on a Sunday morning? Absolutely not. It's disturbing the peace. So well, let's leave it there. I've talked enough. It's a very dull, rainy day in the UK. And I absolutely guarantee you, very, very few, if any, people in Norwich are preaching the gospel on the streets today because of the weather. Would I, of course, if I could find one brother to come out with me, I would walk around the streets and I would preach the gospel. One to one, one to two. I might even raise my voice in the streets and talk to a passerby across the square. I might, but it has to be in the Holy Spirit. It's no point me standing up there shouting my head off. If God's not in it, then it's just me, a, a clanging symbol. So I'm looking in Norwich, UK, for those who not necessarily want to shout on the streets about Jesus, but we, we are, we, we're not going to be intimidated when we walk around the streets to talk to people about Jesus. So keep praying for us, and we pray for you there, that you will answer God's call, the call of Christ, to preach the truth in love to whosoever so that the sheep, the sheep of Christ, will hear the voice of Christ and be drawn to Christ for salvation. This is where I am, 23rd of December, 2022. Pray for me, pray for us in the city, for those brothers to really understand why they've been saved from their sins. It is to testify about that fact to whosoever. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church. John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Keep praying for us one day of salvation at a time. Jesus is coming again. We know this. And we must be ready. So, Christ is coming. Christ is coming. Our bridegroom is coming and he's only going to take those who are ready. Ready today to testify about him. Not ashamed of him, not ashamed of his name, not ashamed of the gospel. Do you know people like that? If you know someone who is like that, 
connect with that person. Man to man, woman to woman, couple to couple. I say that advisedly. God bless you. Talk again soon. According to God's will, one day of salvation at a time. God bless you.